All right, Bob O'Dell and Gidoni Ariel with Root Source. Hi, everybody. <laughs> We're back. We're talking about a day in the life of Gidoni Ariel and. Uh, to some extent, Orthodox Jews in general, because we're talking about the prayers uh, that we did the morning prayer, and we've gotten to the point where you are now decided this is a day where you need to uh, come to come to uh, Jerusalem. Yeah. How how did you get to Jerusalem today? When, when, when did you leave your uh, your house? About eight o'clock in the morning. You left at eight, and so how long did it take you to get here today? Um, about an hour and a half. An hour and a half. In what would, if there was no traffic, that would have been a 45 minute drive. Yeah, drive, something right? like that. Pretty normal. Well, yeah. also a double, but the commutes, you know, the, the, the travel. Okay, so tell us about, so how did you get to Jerusalem today? I don't think you drove your car. No, I did not drive my car. My neighbor drove his car and gave me a lift. Okay, so you had a friend that. You can, okay, how did you how did you know how did you know to get a ride with that friend? We have a community WhatsApp tramping list. Tramping list. Yeah, a tramp is a hitchhike, mm -hmm. but as opposed to standing on the road towards San Diego with your thumb up, in our community we try to have we people say, hey, I'm leaving to Jerusalem tomorrow morning at about quarter to eight. Anybody want to come with me? So my wife is the morning tramp, tramp means hitchhike, as I said, she's the uh, tramp, morning tramp queen. She needs to get to Jerusalem. Often she will take the seven o'clock bus. We have a small community, so it's, uh, we only have about a bus on the average once every hour or two from our yeah. community. Not so much in the middle of the day. So if I need to get somewhere, uh, let's say be there at noon or one or two, Usually I'll have to take the 10.30 bus. Okay. Because if I miss that bus, there's not another one until about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. But so, so today you, you used WhatsApp. Now, I don't know if everyone knows what WhatsApp is, but it's an well, app on that, was, that was built by a company in Israel. Probably. Right? And it's become <laughs> it's become standard for Israelis, right? Yeah. It's like more than, I, than iPhone Messenger or whatever. I mean, it's just... Yeah. It is, because it works across all phones and there are different, different places in the world have different uh, social media and social communication um, app applications, and that's the one that's popular in Israel. And so you have a group for this, so everyone in the community is like on this one WhatsApp group, and <laughs> everyone in the one WhatsApp group. Less than everyone, yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. And, uh, um, and so if you, if you were just to wake up and say, oh my goodness, I need to go to Jerusalem uh, not in the middle of the day, but in the morning, and you put out on the group, hey, is anyone going? How how, how often, how, how fast would you get a reply? And the uh, person in charge of our WhatsApp tramp group does not allow people asking, hey, is anybody leaving? Okay. It only allows people saying, hey, I'm leaving. Anybody want to come with me? Oh, that's smart. Okay. Okay. But if I will, but we also have a, a men's group on the WhatsApp and a woman's group on the WhatsApp. We're a very religious community. So uh, if I need to leave, I will ask, is anybody leaving? Because somebody might not think to post that he's leaving, but if I ask him, then he might answer. Yes. Now picture this, uh, picture your com community. I want people to, to picture it. It's sort of on a hilltop, right? And, and you've got these, you know, it's kind of clusters of houses and the yes. roads are kind of rings around the top of the hill. Okay. And then you've got these security, big security fence all the way around. Right. Right. And inside the community, what percentage of the people there uh, are, are religious? 100%. 100%. You, so this is far enough away from stuff that if you're not religious, you, you, you well, does the, does the uh, religion, the Orthodox sort of drive is it a forcing function for people to, to live where they're living? Sure, nobody's going to, first of all, we won't accept people who aren't religious. Oh, in other words, the community has decided we shall, we are a religious community. Yes, and, and nobody who's not religious is going to come to, uh, to try to be accepted in our community. There are other communities nearby who are non, who, that are not religious, le less religious, mixed religious and not religious. Right. There are over 200 uh, Jewish communities in uh, Judea and Samaria, and so you choose the one that you feel most comfortable right. in. Okay. All right. I said so, before that 100% of the people are religious. That's not true. There are some uh, children of the families there who are testing the waters and aren't uh, religious. Okay. Uh, but they live there. Okay. That's the way it goes. 
So you got a trip with a, a guy who yes. was uh, leaving today. And with my so, wife also. Okay, all right. So, uh, and you left at nine. So you, no, we you left at about eight. Left at about eight. Um, and uh, you got, so you, it was about 9.30. Okay. Yeah, and then I arrived here. Now you knew I wasn't going to be available to meet with you until 12.30. So that, you had a couple hours then. So I went to, into the local Starbucks, which are called Aroma here in Israel. Aroma Cafe, yes. And uh, they have very uh, comfortable free Wi-Fi. Okay. And nobody bothers you. So I waited for you to come at about uh, noon, 12.30, so we could have lunch. And okay. I somehow managed not to have anything <laughs> to eat until 12.30. It didn't bother me too much. Um, one other thing about your drive. Uh, uh, there are, do you drive through, like, for instance, uh, Bethlehem is between you and Jerusalem, right in the middle between you and Jerusalem. Do you drive through Bethlehem on the way? No. This is already a little bit of a history lesson. Um, around the time of the Oslo uh, Accords, which were, I think, about 1993 or 1994, mm -hmm. and sometime thereafter, there began a, uh, a movement a governmental trend of building what we call kvishem okfim, detour roads around um, big Arab population centers in Judea and Samaria. Because mm -hmm. it was uncomfortable driving through these uh, Arab Muslim cities, mostly because the infrastructure was not so good. You're driving on a very small road and it's like the main highway. Of a town. So instead, they built these nice, comfortable highways that uh, detoured around the, you know, ring road around the, around the towns. So right now, from where I live, we have these ring roads up until, um, I would say, about five kilometers south of Gush Etzion, which is a, a, a large Jewish uh, settlement cluster. Just south of Beit of Beit Lech. That's really the but, biggest junction between where you are down near Hebron that's right. and Jerusalem, right. Gush Etzion. But right south of uh, Gush Etzion is El ha is um, is El Chader. No, no, El Chader is north of it. But is, is uh, El Arub and Beit Omar, two Arab cities or villages, and we drive uh, to the west of El Arub, but we drive straight through. Um, Beit Omar. I know that uh, part of the road uh, well when I come down to visit you. Right. I, I go through that. And That's right. uh, yeah, it's always a little bit, sometimes it's just a, like the traffic just a little bit weird there. People, it's, yeah, it's, people it's, walking it's, all over that highway. Yeah. We're, we're, we're understanding that they're going to build a detour road around uh, El Arub and Beit Omar, and that will cut the drive about uh, five or ten minutes, oh. not to mention when there's uh, serious traffic, and it'll be a much more comfortable road. Okay, nice. All right, so you got to Aroma Cafe, you worked for two, three hours doing emails and stuff. Yes. Uh, I said I was gonna meet you at 12.30, yes. I was uh, 10 minutes late, got around 12.40, and, uh, and you said, oh, we gotta hurry up and eat, uh, because I've got uh, I've got my afternoon prayer at, I think it was 1.15. 1.15. And so you said, I have to leave at 110. Okay. And so you were, so from the Aroma Cafe, you walked about, down to... About three minutes. Um, and uh, where did you go for your... Uh, in the afternoon prayer. So usually in synagogues around uh, Israel, you have the afternoon and the evening prayer more or less together, usually with a break of about 20 minutes. The end of the afternoon and the beginning of the evening. Mm -hmm. Usually it's 20, the, the afternoon prayer begins 20 minutes before sunset, and the evening prayer begins 20 minutes after sunset. And the afternoon prayer is about 20 minutes, and then you have about a 20 minute break to, for a, a little lesson or something, and then another 20 minutes of evening prayer. But I prefer to get, a, a, that, so that's one model. Yeah. And there are many other uh, synagogues that people aren't home yet, at five, six o'clock in the afternoon. So they have a regular evening prayer at about eight, which is what we have in our community. In our community, we don't have an afternoon prayer in the main synagogue because most people are working outside of the home and people who work on, on, uh, on the grounds in the community like me, or like uh, teacher, people are teaching at one of the boys' schools that they have two boys' afternoon prayer sessions 
at 2.30 and 2.40. So okay. if I miss the 2.30, I get the 2.40. That's usually what I do every day. I know that when I come to visit you, I like catching the early uh, minion, the early afternoon prayer at 1.15 or so at this place called the Emic Learning Center. Hmm. Um, so Emic, of course, we live in a community, in a, in a neighborhood called Emic Rifaim, which really means Ghost Valley, if anybody ever wants to trans translate it. I thought it was Valley of the Giants. Uh, uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, Rephaim. So yes. Uh, but uh, but so Goliath it's was. it's a it's a it's a uh, community. Mm -hmm. It's a neighborhood that has a lot of Anglo uh, English speakers here, as you know. And so somebody decided to open up a learning center for for uh, people who want to learn there, learn Torah. And so they have a uh, sort of like a little yeshiva. And they have a daily afternoon um, prayer session, so I like to catch that when I'm when I come to visit you. And uh, will you see the same people there every time you go? Pretty much. Okay, but there will be visitors that can like me. And, I'm a and uh, is it uh, is is it a, a common or uncommon thing for uh, for visitors to be dropping in on 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 these um, you know lunchtime uh, prayers? I don't know what you what you mean by uh, by common. Uh, if people know about it, then they come. All of these synagogues they have an open door policy. I was uh, fixing a car a few weeks or months back, and I noticed somebody walking briskly with a kippah on his head. I said, "You wouldn't happen to be going to a an afternoon prayer, a mincha prayer, are you?" He said, "Yes, yeah, matter of fact, I am right now at two o'clock." So I went right in, and there were ten or fifteen people, and I was number sixteen. Wow. And, and you need to have uh, how many people in, in those uh, to reach your quota? Ten. Ten. And that's, that's called a... a that's called a minion. Okay. M-I-N-Y-A-N. And it has to be uh, ten uh, people or ten... Uh, ten men over the age of thirteen. Okay. Okay. It has to be uh, Jews. Uh, right, yeah. Right. Okay. And uh, any women there? Usually not. Okay. But uh, nowadays there are more and more women who are... Uh, who are deciding that they want to take upon themselves the uh, responsibility of praying daily or sometimes. Sometimes if a woman is uh, in their year of mourning for a parent, then they will want to say the Kaddish. Okay. And so they will make it their business to uh, pray every day. But usually they will focus on finding a uh, synagogue service daily service they're comfortable okay. in, and that they will do that there. Uh, okay. That's the way it goes. Okay. Now, um, so uh, when we come back and we continue this day, I want to ask you about how you pray over the food that we ate at lunch. Oh, I was yeah, with you at, at that point. So when we come back, we'll do that. Uh, until that point, uh, we'll say for now, Shalom. Shalom, Shalom.